so we have audio. That's great. Thanks to, I think the Civic Center just hooked us up with these. Thank you to whoever that was. So next up is uh, Tara. Um, and if you are on Twitter and or you work in the agriculture space, you probably know her. She's known as John Deere Tara on Twitter. So she uh, l works for a large global company. And she's going to talk about integrating um, social media and social networks into a large institution like that. And what Nathan didn't mention is the reason that I go by John Deere Terra everywhere, in part is because, yes, I work for John Deere, but also because if I try to use my given name, which is Terra Sailor Litzenberger, I run out of characters. <laughs> I have approximately 55,000 coworkers. We work in about 60 different facilities located on 20 different countries, and we are operating in six of the seven continents. We don't currently do a lot of business down in Antarctica, but if farming picks up, we'll probably head down. <laughs> My coworkers and I communicate with each other mainly in English, but we have six different core languages that we use, plus another two dozen or so that are spoken on a day-to-day -day basis around our, our company. Based on the different time zones that we have and the 24-7 uh, nature of manufacturing, it's a pretty good bet that, that there is a John Deere employee at work every hour of every day. I tell you all this stuff not because I want to say, hey, look, it's a big company. You guys know that it's a big company. But large companies and social media often don't go together in tech conferences. We hear a lot about our case study companies. You know, you've got Dell, you've got Cisco, you've got the Ford Motor Company, you've got Southwest Airlines. But everybody else, they kind of look at us and say, do they not get social media? Well, the truth is, like it tends to be, a lot more complex. And I'm, I'm here today to talk about the fact that, yes, large companies do get social media. It's just that implementing them is a whole new headache for a lot of those companies. And to get it all done is just, just lots of obstacles and hurdles that other companies don't, smaller companies don't tend to see. The first hurdle that we face is lawyers. And actually, I just wanted to tell a lawyer joke because I, I like our lawyers that we work with at Deere. But even though we are a company that is based in Moline, Illinois and incorporated in the US, we still have to follow the rules of all the different countries where we do business. So that means if I want to run a contest, uh, sweepstakes in Canada, I have to be ready with a question of skill for my winner to answer before he or she can take possession of the prize. Just think of how thrilled that winner would not be if they won the prize and we were not prepared. And so think of all the nuances that go into a relationship with blogger outreach here in the US with the FTC and disclosure and multiply that across the entire globe and across different countries. I had to get a lot of meeting notices from coworkers in Germany and the Netherlands before I could just easily rattle off what the privacy policy is for the EU 27 around net meetings. And I can, I'll do that on break if you'd like to hear it. Um, but suddenly a country like France talking about changing how they are wanting passwords to be saved is not just theoretical for you, it's something that you need to be prepared to handle. The, the second thing that we hit is, is vendors. And that's not a slam on vendors because there are amazing service providers out there. It is a matter of, well, our, our requirements of vendors tend to be pretty stringent, unique, challenging. If I am working on a campaign and I want to share with my engineering community a prototype that isn't going to be released to the public for another five years, I probably don't want to slap that video up on YouTube. So suddenly I need to find a vendor who can host that securely for us, meet the global scale, integrate with our 
occasionally interesting infrastructure that does exist and uh, still provide the uptime that we require. On, on top of that, when you look at companies like Yammer or uh, Jive in the forums that they have, a lot of them charge back per user. And while the fees that they charge are very reasonable fees and they make money, when you're talking about tens of thousands of people, that fee does add up. Of course, once I get a message past the lawyers and get it posted somewhere, the next thing I have to do is actually get it out to the people who are going to receive it. And we tend to have a lot of factories that are in rural parts of the world because we tend to have a lot of customers who are in rural parts of the world. And even here in the US where there are places where we don't get a lot of cell signal and we talk about rural broadband, it's still much, much better than say Brazil where only 10%, 20% of their roads are even paved. I got to enjoy, I think would be the word I'm supposed to use, a bus trip through Brazil where six coworkers and I with the smartest of smartphones amused ourselves by playing who can send an email. And the answer was none of us. And <laughs> That was with some of uh, global, a really good global data plan. There was just no signal there. Even having a wired connection is not necessarily going to make it that much better because again, some of our structure is just in such rural parts of the world that it is dated or has limited capacity. We wanted to share live training as a webcast with a factory over in the Netherlands. And so we were gonna do a stream, it was gonna be great, it was gonna be in person, it was gonna be interactive. Then we found out that to get that live stream to about 30 people at the facility, we'd have to ask everybody else in the f factory to stay off the internet for the duration so that they could get a stream. Considering it was the middle of the afternoon and they were trying to get work done, we, we went with a different way to get, get that to them. On top of it, even if I can get the message to them, there's still even one more step I have to overcome. And that is the global literacy. Here in the US, they say that if you are, are writing for a large audience, you need to target about a seventh grade level. That is Reader's Digest, or that is a Dan Brown book. Um, yeah. So if you are going to take it internationally, that turns into a third grade level. So that is Sports Illustrated for Kids or Charlotte's Web, which is a better book, but you know, that's a different point. On top of that, because we work in a manufacturing environment, over half of my coworkers work in an environment where they're not sitting at a computer every day. And yes, they can, can access our networks through smartphones, but they're on a manufacturing line. They're not in a position to be checking Facebook every 20 minutes. We were actually joking about, you know, tweeting while assembling being as dangerous as texting while driving. It's just not realistic. These experiences that I've shared are in no way universal, and they're even not comprehensive for just my company. I also don't want to be making excuses for large companies, because the fact of the matter is, we can't continue to be slow in adapting to social media. But I recently heard a fact from the Altimeter Group that most big companies have only had social media in place for about two years. And the ones at the very forefront, the, the people who are those case study companies, are looking at something very, the longevity of five years. What I want to do is give everybody here an idea of some of the skills it's going to take to integrate social media with big organizations. Because it is not enough just to understand Twitter or to be able to produce engaging content or to be able to explain and sell the value of a two-way conversation. On top of that, you have to be able to plan. You have to be able to problem solve, often for problems that other people don't even realize exist. You have got to be flexible. You have got to be ready to adjust on the fly. I think probably about 
50% of my job is still being made up on a day-to-day -day basis, which for me is a lot of fun, but it's not, not for everyone. The, the other side of that, though, is we have this huge opportunity in front of us to change what people consider business as usual. As, as social media goes to work, we have an opportunity to really adjust and adapt how business is done and help bring it into the companies so that they get a real benefit from it. And you know what? It is going to be a lot of work. But the other part is, it is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Terry. That was great.